Alrighty, hello everyone, welcome to Oakheart Studios. So today, like I said in my Instagram video earlier, I'm going to be starting on a wand today. Uh, this is one that was ordered two weeks ago, and it was ordered to be made out of hazelnut, because hazelnut is the uh, birth wood, so the um, the Oghem birth wood of this individual's wand, I believe. So uh, we're going to be using hazelwood, and I collected this hazelwood about two and a half weeks ago, um, and it's been curing since then, so it's been drying out and stuff. And you'll notice I only took the bark away from one half of it, and I left the other half on there still. And I also glued the ends down a little bit. Um, and you can see that it did get a little bit of checking right here, um, where it split a little bit. But I think I'll be able to make that the end of the wand, the tip. And I'll be able to carve that down and make that uh, smooth. So what we're going to do is we're going to strip the rest of the bark off this, and then I'm going to use a pencil and I'm gonna lay out the design on it. And I'll show you that. I've got that pulled up on my tablet right here. And I'll also put it up on the screen for you guys in the video so you can see it. So this design here has a Slytherin theme to it. And when I was designing it, I was going for something that was kind of dagger-like. So you'll notice that the handle has kind of a, a dagger-like handle to it, that kind of theme. Um, I also, in the cross guard area there, did a sort of diamond-like design so that it had uh, these two spikes coming down the sides of the wands, and then on the front and back, um, you have this kind of diamond-like design I'm going to carve into there, and then it also features some uh, spiraling that goes down the shaft, which does two things, you know, for one, it's reminiscent of a snake, and for another thing, it actually adds strength and support to the wand, since this is a wand with a fairly thin shaft on it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna sharpen up my carving knives. I've got three main carving knives here made by Elemental Tools. And uh, this is just a general carving knife right here. It's kind of a bulk cutter for taking down a lot of material. This is a more fine-tuned knife. So this is for uh, doing more of the detail work. And then this is actually a scoop knife. And I don't use this very much while I'm carving wands. This is more like for making bowls and spoons and anything that's got a, a dip in it that you got to carve out, which is very uncommon when it comes to wands. So I don't use that a whole lot. But I do use these two a lot, and I'm going to sharpen those up. Got my handy dandy workshop multi uh, sided knife sharpener here. And I start off on the coarse side, take down the material, and set the edge. I always kind of feel that with my finger, which might make some people squeamish, which I apologize for, but I have a feel for it, and I know when it's uh, sharp and when it's not. Oh, that feels good. And it's cutting well, too, so I think we're good there. I'm going to do the other knife. All right, so now with my knives all sharpened up and my pencil sharpened up as well, I'm going to strip the rest of the bark off of this billet here, and then I am going to measure it, make sure I've got it to the proper length. Um, I believe that length was 13 inches that the customer requested, but I'm going to double check that um, before I start carving. And then I'm going to lay out the pattern with a pencil to make sure that I'm doing everything in the right spot, because one tricky thing about working with hazel is that it's a pretty thin wood. You know, it's not a real robust uh, tree that grows really big. Um, it usually only gets as big as, you know, an inch, an inch and a half in diameter if you're lucky. Uh, it's more of a shrub or a bush than a tree. Um, so we got to be very careful on how much material we take away here because we don't have a lot to work with. But first, let's take the bark off it. And for that, I'm going to use my bulk cutter. So I cured this wand shaft here for about two and a half, three weeks, um, and I glued the ends and just stripped down half of it, which is to prevent the moisture from leaving it too quickly, because if it leaves it too quickly, it will really crack the wood, and we don't want that. Uh, we want the wood to be stable, and short of kiln drying it, this is the best way to do it uh, for a shaft of wood that's about you know an inch in diameter, such as this one right here was. And I wasn't seeing any green underneath the bark, so I know that all the moisture is out. All right, so we have all the bark carved off of it, and uh, we, now we are going to move on to marking that. Uh, we got to double check our length, and then go ahead and mark where everything is going to set up, and then we can start carving. Okay, so now with that laid out, generally, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I get all my points laid out first. So I'm going to carve along here and here, and I'm just going to kind of uh, carve those parts out so that they're set. And then I'm going to come in here and start to slim the handle down, slim down the finger joins right here, and then I'll start to dig into the blade and I'll slim down that down a little bit as well. I do have a spiral that I have to put around this shaft, so I have to keep that in mind and make sure to leave enough material behind to do that. So let's get started. The carving process is always a tricky balance between taking away enough material and leaving behind enough material, you know. When it comes to woodworking, there's the old adage that you can always uh, cut it off, but you can't put it back on. And uh, that's the truth here, for sure. Especially when you're working with something as thin as this hazelwood on this wand, with so many details involved, you really have to be very picky, very choosy about what wood you choose to take away and uh, how much you choose to take away. So that's what makes it a long process. It took me about two hours to carve this down from a billet into the general shape. And I'm not going to show the whole thing here, obviously. This is just a clip of it. Um, but I was happy to see as I carved this wand down that there doesn't appear to be any moisture within it. So it's well balanced. All right, so I just got done carving down the wand into the basic shape. Took me about an hour or two to do that. I really, really wasn't keeping track of the time. Um, as, yeah, as you can see, I have quite the pile of wood shavings here now. So now we've got the basic shape down into the wand. Um, and the next step is going to be to uh, start to get some more shape into the pommel here. Um, and then we need to get some sandpaper out and start smoothing things down a little bit so that we can do a little bit of wood burning through here. And then we'll have to round off the pommel. Uh, give that some more shape and we're going to be putting a wooden button in the end um, after we drill it out and then we'll put the core inside of it. This is going to be a half tang core. It's going to come through to about right here. Uh, a lot of times when I do wands I do full tang but in this case I'm going to have to do half tang just because of how thin and slight the shaft of the wand is here. It's still quite strong um, especially with that spiral going around it. it gives it a little bit of strength but because of how thin it is uh, it's just not quite thick enough to warrant putting a core all the way through it. So it's just going to be half tang to about right here, and that's where the wand is still going to be strong. All right, so I'm going to put it down for today, and tomorrow I'm going to go back to work on it, and uh, hopefully we can start getting things smoothed out and the finer details put together. So that's the wand update for today. Uh, I was really happy to get a start on it. Um, now I'll be able to go into the finishing details here tomorrow, I hope, and within the week, I'm hoping to have this wand done and ready to go out the door. Um, and then tomorrow, we're going to be doing um, possibly more painting or otherwise uh, starting to design a workbench to go into the workshop, which is going to be really exciting because once that's done, I have some other really cool projects, including several awesome wands and swords that need to be done. And I'm also going to be myself, myself once in a while. Um, I'm going to be building myself a witcher costume. It's going to be full out real leather. It's going to be super expensive to make, but it's going to be really, really fun to wear to next year's Renaissance Festival costume, or <laughs> to wear to next, next year's Renaissance Festival. I'm starting to get tired. Um, all right, well, thank you for tuning in, and I will see you all tomorrow.